In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the world of sculpting in ZBrush, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, is one of the more popular reasons to even use ZBrush in the first place. The idea that you can grab a 3D model, either created entirely within ZBrush, or created in, a, in another application and imported in by means of an OBJ object, and then sculpt it to add all kinds of detail and, and really shape it in an intuitive and sculpture-like way. It really does kind of feel like you're pushing and pulling some sort of interesting clay-like material while you work. Now, I take it to get the most out of this, you really need to be using a Wacom tablet. It, this is true. Uh, actually, one of the, I just wanted to kind of jot a few notes down in terms of this. So when you're sculpting, generally speaking, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of well, I, I don't want to just say moving. It's pushing, pulling, and a whole lot more. So let me just say that. Okay. Push, pull, and then in parentheses, we'll say and more. Your vertices. Now, when I say ver vertices, and that's points, that's uh, however you want to look at that. Those are the, the little dots that make up a 3D model. You can have a whole lot of these in ZBrush. Okay. ZBrush supports up to one billion billion I, I can't okay <laughs> you're welcome to crack fun at me if you want to no nah. one billion points at one time impressive which uh, you know if if anybody in the room is kind of like is that it try it just try to make a model with a billion points you can trust me but uh but just see how much detail that really gets you i mean you're talking like pores that have pores mm -hmm. at that point now of course, that much detail isn't really going to help you unless you have some sort of a means to shape it into something. And fortunately, ZBrush's tool set makes the, move, the motion and the adjustment of that many points extremely intuitive and very easy to do. But as you mentioned a few moments ago, you really do need some sort of digitizing tablet if you want to make the most of your ZBrush work. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, just working with a mouse, I could see somebody becoming very frustrated. And even even with a mouse, I'll give uh, PixelLogic miles of credit. Uh, they have one of the smoothest mouse painting experiences I know. That's cool. Uh, there, There's a feature within ZBrush, which I'll show in just a second, just uh, for the fun of it, called Lazy Mouse. Mm-hmm which averages out the position of your hand. So you it's really actually kind of hard to make it look jittery. <laughs> You'll get these nice, smooth, flowing curves, which for sculpting is extremely handy. But the reason that I focus so hard on a digitizing tablet is really for one word. You know what that word is? What's that one word? Pressure. And waiting for your computer to catch up. <laughs> Pressure is Oh, it's so nice, and it can really lead to a much cleaner, organic feel in your work. Because when you're drawing on a sculpt that you're working on in ZBrush, if you have a digital tablet, you can click and drag just a little bit, very faintly across the surface, and you'll either push or pull just a tiny little amount. Mm -hmm. And if you apply some pressure, you'll really start to feel the difference in each and every individual stroke. And you can get some nice, very natural, flowing lines that way, and really start to feel what it is you're putting together. Cool. So if you're wanting to take this very Seriously, I highly recommend you get your hands on a digitizing tablet. Fortunately, these days, the price on these has come down a lot. You really do not need to invest in having a gigantic one. Uh, a smaller one, even the small little, uh, was it like four by sixes and even smaller than that, will be just fine in terms of just giving you enough room to start really sculpting on your canvas inside of ZBrush. Okay, all that said, I do want to take just a moment and show you a few really general basics of sculpting inside of ZBrush. So what I'm going to do is jump into the light box. And if you are uh, using ZBrush on a low resolution screen like I am, and you try to open your light box and it's very short, do what I just did. And what I did was I clicked on this little divider line over here on the right side of your interface. And you see that's going to take our little uh, tray over there and collapse it down. And then when you click on your light box button, everything has a little more room to open. So if you just have a little horizontal light box like this and things are all crushed up and you can't see stuff, that's kind of how to get a little more room out of it. Hopefully, though, you're running ZBrush at a slightly higher resolution. Yeah, than I, would, I would hope so. Yeah, I, I really hope so. All right, so I'm just going to grab the default sphere. I'll double click this and we get a brand new scene with a default sphere already in edit mode, already in draw mode and ready for us to just get cracking. Now, if I put my mouse, now I'm using a tablet. So when, when I say mouse right now, I actually mean my stylus. When I move my stylus such that my cursor is sitting over the sphere, 
I get this little, uh, you notice that the, the cursor itself kind of has a three-dimensional feel to it. Mm -hmm. You can feel it kind of sliding across the surface. You notice it's got two concentric rings. It has uh, the inside ring, which is going to be our draw size. I'm sorry, the outer ring is going to be our draw size. And then the inside ring is going to be our focal shift. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a blurring. If you're familiar with like Photoshop's uh, use of softening a brush, that's exactly what this is. Gotcha. That's how hard of a response you're getting. Now, you'll also notice in my case that I, I haven't even clicked anything yet, but we have two cursors. If you look really close, mm -hmm. there's one and there's a little tiny dot reflected on the other side. That's because right now I'm using symmetry. If you see that and don't want it, you can hit the X key. If you don't see it and you do want it, you can hit the, hit, X, hit key. the X key and, <laughs> and there you go. But the idea is that as you do something on one side, it gets reflected on the other, which is pretty handy. Now, again... In g very, very general terms, uh, most of your sculpts are going to be about pushing and pulling detail out of the surface. You're, of course, not limited to that. There is an entire library of various tools that you can use in ZBrush to really produce all kinds of effects. Like we have the snake hook brush, which allows you to just grab points and yank them around. Okay. <laughs> not that that would be very useful. As a matter of fact, if you're doing this for something you want to export to another package, that would be kind of problematic in terms of creating something like a displacement or a normal map. Mm -hmm. But you can do it. Uh, for stuff that's strictly inside of ZBrush, it's actually pretty cool. Now, I'm going to kind of leave things uh, sort of general for now. Let's get just the standard brush. And I'm just going to show you a few real basics in terms of sculpting. Up here, I have a slider for Z intensity. This is how far we are pulling or how far we are pushing. And 25 is a little intense for what I have right now. So I'm going to pull this down to about 10. Next, I'm going to drag outside my view. And you'll notice how that's kind of rotating the model around. I'm trying to be very careful not to say rotating us around the model because that's really not what's happening. But because I am a 3D application native, that's how it feels to me. Sure. So let's look pretty much right down the center line here. And if I want to look dead down the center line, I can hold the shift key and that will snap us right to a front view. And if I just click and drag, I'm pulling out. But what if I want to push in to make eye sockets? I have some options here. I can move my mouse up to the top and click on Z sub, which is subtract as opposed to add. Or if I'm a hotkey fan and I don't want to be bothered to move my mouse and actually click something, I can hold down the alt key. And while I'm holding down the alt key, we perform whatever the opposite function is. Now, also, because I'm a hotkey buff from way back, uh, you can hit the S key and check out what that did. If you look up here at the top of the view, if I have my focus really anywhere else up here and I hit S, boom, it puts focus on draw size. And notice it gives you a little draw size slider wherever your mouse is. So you can just tap S and drag and you can readjust your size very, very quickly that way. So I'm going to hold down Alt and push in a little more and create some more interesting eye sockets. ZBrush jumped me just then. Um, I didn't really mean to do that, but what that just was uh, was simply if you hold down Alt and click in space. Mm. And I think that was just the tablet kind of thinking I was someplace else on the document that I probably wasn't. So I'll make my size a little bigger here. And we can pull out something that looks a little bit like eyebrows. And maybe something that looks a little bit like cheekbones. And something that vaguely resembles a nose. And it looks pretty basic right now. Uh, we don't really have a lot of detail. We can see all of those individual polygons that are making this up. Now, I can smooth this out. If I hold down the Shift key and drag, you see we have kind of a smoothing operation. Mm -hmm. It smooths pretty heavily by default. And I just want to point out, as I hold down Shift, take a look at the Z intensity. It's jumping up to 100. Uh, smooth by default is set pretty high. So you can hold down Shift and drag that. And while you're holding Shift, what you're doing is you're adjusting that smoothing intensity as a little token that you'll hear now, and I'll remind you of it later as we get deeper into sculpting, the higher detail you get, the higher you're going to want to set your smoothing. Okay. It seems like moving a lot of points requires a lot higher emphasis or a lot, of, a lot more Z intensity on your tool. So if I pull this out, hold down Shift again, I can smooth that. Uh, I'm going to hold down Alt and click out here in space, and that's going to move this guy. And we can... Let's see, if I hold down the Alt key and push in, we can create kind of a smile. I'll tap S again and drag my brush down to something a little smaller. And I'll push in something that looks a little more smile-like. Fill that in. Now, let's make my brush slightly larger one more time, and I'll really bring my Z intensity down. Now, I'm a big fan of using very low Z intensity and building up my strokes whenever I can. 
So we'll just kind of use this to pull out something kind of like lips. And do this on the, okay, maybe a little more is the intensity. <laughs> Not to be impatient or anything. And then, of course, we can smooth it out if it pulls down too far. So clearly not the most beautiful sculpt you've ever seen in your life. But just a way to kind of get started and let you see what's going on and how this behavior works, how we're taking this piece of geometry and we're pushing and pulling it. <laughs> now, a moment ago, I did mention, you know, that ZBrush does support many, 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 many polygons. And so probably one or two of you out there are wondering, well, Zach, how do I get to the many, many, many polygons? I'll show you. It's a little outside the scope of this discussion, but I'll show you because I know you're dying to play with it. If you expand out your little tray again, which I hid earlier, you should have the tool panel over here. If you don't have it, you probably clicked on something you should have, and this is empty. You can bring it back, though, if you come over to the tool menu here along the top and click on this little tiny circular icon, and that'll just dump it right back over. So if you get over there and you don't see it, that's how you can bring it back. What you're going to do is go under the Geometry sub-panel. And this has got all kinds of scary buttons in it. I only want you to focus on one right now, and that's Divide. And that's just going to divide your model up. I clicked it once, and you'll notice that things look a lot smoother than they did. A word of warning, however. Do this just one click at a time. Do one little bit of division, and then maybe continue sculpting for a while longer until you get to a point where you just can't get to the detail that you need. See, like right now, the amount of detail I have is great for continuing facial features. I mean, I can pinch in around the edge of the nose. I can really bring out some detail in the nostrils. We can create a nice ridge on the, cor on the edge of the nose. I can sharpen up the smile. All kinds of fun things I can do. But if I wanted to really start getting some creases in around the nose, I don't have enough detail. So only when I get to a point where I'm ready to start putting in those creases am I going to come over and maybe click Divide again. If you're brand new to ZBrush, you're probably already fighting an urge to click that as many times as you can to see <laughs> how long it takes before your computer explodes. Right. It won't be long. We already have 393,218 points in this one little sphere. In fact, just to show off, if I click this again, we now have 1.572 million. And if I click again, it's going to notice it's thinking now. We jump over to 6.291 million, and if I try to click it one more time, we should get a warning. It says, subdividing the current mesh will produce a mesh with polygon count larger than the specified in preferences mem options. I'm not going to show you how to change that. Technically, ZBrush just told you. But I just want to mention that really at this point, we can do all kinds of detail. You'll notice that that looks ridiculously smooth right mm -hmm. there. And I can just zoom in, and this is the point where I could start putting in all kinds of creases. Also notice, when I hold down Shift and try to drag on this, it really almost looks like nothing's happening. As I mentioned earlier, when you're trying to smooth, you really need to crank up your Z intensity if you have a whole lot of points. And even then, it just takes some time. So all kinds of food for thought. And again, I just intended this to be a bit of an introduction. I will throw this at you. Earlier, we showed the hook brush, or the snake hook brush, which is more fun than it is maybe useful but we can also grab more fun things like the stitch brush if i make my draw size a little bigger and we can you know, let's hit x so i'm no, no longer symmetrical and we have prefabricated things like stitches so nice. that looks like one of the mad balls from way back in the 80s or something but uh if you uh, there there was one more thing i promised i would mention and i didn't and that is if you are forced to paint with a mouse and you just feel like your hand is too shaky to do anything uh, interesting, all hope is not lost. Uh, this, I'm now, right now, I'm painting with my mouse, and if maybe you feel like, oh, but that's just shaky and looks terrible, tap the L key, and what that's going to do is activate lazy mouse mode. Now, you'll notice I'm not getting as much feedback, so I will have to crank up my Z intensity to compensate. But if you see that little tiny red line that's tracing off my mouse, that's like a vector. And what's happening is the actual brush stroke is lagging behind to the end of that line. So just kind of an interesting thing that can you can play with if you're stuck with a mouse and you need to smooth out your brush strokes. But that is my quick introduction to the world of sculpting. Please, by all means, jump in, play, and have fun. But that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.